Welcome to the next lecture in Power Electronics. We were discussing the rectifier circuits. The importance of capacitor in the rectifier circuit we will discuss in this lecture. So here in this circuit we have the AC source which is single phase AC source. One diode is connected in the network. So it is basically a half wave rectifier. The load comprise of the register and the capacitor. So the half wave rectifier has a parallel RC load. The capacitor here reduces the output voltage variation making it more like a DC waveform. So we want a pure DC waveform. So this capacitor will reduce the output voltage variation. The R represents the external load whereas the capacitor is the representation of the filter in the rectifier circuit. Let us assume the capacitor to be initially uncharged. So we can say see that the capacitor initially is uncharged. At omega t equal to 0, the voltage is positive. So when we give the AC cycle for the first half of the AC cycle as omega t equal to 0 means it is just starting at time t equal to 0, the voltage is positive. We can say that diode is forward biased and the output voltage is equal to the source voltage so the capacitor will start charging so this output voltage is equal to the source voltage and the capacitor will start charging to the output voltage as it is connected in parallel with the register at omega t equal to pi by 2 the voltage is maximum and the capacitor will charge to vm so when we have the AC cycle, it is maximum at pi by 2. So at pi by 2, the voltage is maximum, which is at Vm. So the capacitor is charging to Vm. But after pi by 2, if we observe the network after pi by 2, what happened? The voltage decreases. So the capacitor is discharging its potential, which is stored to the register. At certain angle theta, the voltage of the source is less than V0. The diode will be off because it will be reversed bias and the node will be disconnected from the source. The output voltage is decaying exponential with the time constant given by RC of the network while the diode is off. So when this diode is off on the reversed bias, the voltage V0 will be decaying exponentially. So this is the waveform of the circuit. We can see that at certain theta which is more than pi by 2, the voltage will be decreasing exponentially for V0. And again at 2 pi pi plus alpha, the voltage will increase. So let us see what happened. The diode, the diode turns off when the rate at which the voltage decreases surpasses the rate endowed by the time constant of the RC network. This point is identified by comparing the rate of change of the voltage to that of the capacitor voltage. The output voltage we can write as when the diode is on is equal to Vm sin omega t but when the diode is off we can write the voltage as V0 e to the power. So here we can say that it is exponentially decreasing and the V theta is equal to Vm sin theta. So here we have the V theta uh, which is equal to Vm sin theta and it is exponentially decreasing as e to the power minus omega t minus theta by omega c. If we equate the slope of these functions, first we obtain the slope of these functions. So the first slope we can obtain for Vm sin omega t by differentiating with omega t and the second one we can also differentiate with omega t so we will get it the slope now these slopes are equal at omega t equal to theta where we have the voltage to be decreasing and hence when we equate it and reach to this function after certain mathematical manipulations we will get the theta as 10 inverse of minus omega by rc to set it in the proper quadrant we have to add certain pi so pi minus 10 inverse omega rc will be equal to theta. For practical circuit, this tau is very large. So we can say that theta is normally 
equal to pi by 2 and Vm sin theta is approximately equal to Vm. So for this waveform, what we have is that at omega t equal to 2 pi plus alpha again, the diode will turn on and in the second period again we can obtain the voltage to be the same value as the decaying exponential. So again it will decay exponentially and we can equate the slope again but now in this time we have alpha instead of theta and we can get this expression which is in form of alpha. This alpha has to be solved numerically to get the value. Now the current which is flowing in the register we can write in terms of Ohm's law as V0 by R and the current which is flowing in the capacitor we can write as C D V0 by DT where V0 is the output voltage and in terms of omega T instead of T we can write this expression as IC is in terms of omega T. So the current of the capacitor in terms of omega T for different time zones we can write it. So first we can set from theta to 2 pi plus alpha we will have the diode to be in the off state and from 2 pi plus alpha to 2 pi plus theta the diode will be again on. So this is for the second half cycle. S current is basically equal to the diode current and diode current is the sum of register current plus the capacitor current. This is from the KCL equation. The average capacitor current is zero because if we see one half of the AC cycle it will charge, other half cycle it will discharge so we can say that average capacitor current is zero and the average diode current is equal to the source current. The peak capacitive current occurs at omega t equal to 2 pi plus alpha so the peak current of the capacitor we can have the equation omega c vm cos 2 pi plus alpha. So cos 2 pi plus alpha we can write again the cos alpha so it will be omega c vm into cos alpha. Register current at omega t equal to 2 plus alpha we can find out which we will get at vm sin alpha by r. So the peak diode current now will be equal to the sum of the register current plus capacitor current. So we have seen this is the register current and the capacitor current we can add it and we can get what is the peak diode current in the circuit. The effectiveness of the capacitor filter is basically gauged by the variation in the output voltage. The variation is represented by the difference between the maximum and the minimum output voltage which is known as peak to peak ripple voltage. Maximum output voltage is basically Vm and the minimum voltage occur at omega t equal to 2 pi plus alpha is Vm sin alpha. So this difference between the maximum voltage and the minimum voltage is given by the ripple voltage which is equal to Vm 1 minus sin alpha. Approximately we can say that the peak to peak ripple voltage we can get it as approximately equal to Vm 2 pi by omega rc or we can say that Vm by frequency into Rc. So it depends upon what frequency we are operating and the time constant of the network and the maximum value at the voltage. So when the capacitor value is more, the ripple voltage decreases or the voltage fluctuation decreases, the conduction interval of the diode decreases and the peak diode current increases. So in this lecture we discussed on the capacitor filter and the previous few lectures we have discussed with different loading condition for the, the rectifier circuits with the help of even the free wheeling diodes. So all these lecture combination will give a clear idea of single phase half wave rectifier circuits. In the coming lecture we will see the discussions on the full wave rectifier. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.